sure I, Mr. Brunches will keep you abreast of the continuation of the process. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you. We'll now move on to our second nomination, this uh, Sideway Bridge. Mr. Brunches, will you be in this presentation? I will not. I believe oh. uh, Prospectus is here to do this. Yes, good morning. I am Elizabeth Corbin Murphy, principal at Prospectus Architecture, and we are here to present to you the Sideway Bridge in consideration of local landmark status. The Ohio Historic Sites Preservation Advisory Board has already recommended this project to the National Park Service, and it's under final review in Washington for listing in the National Register of Historic Places. The bridge was built in 1930, uh, designed by Wilbur Watson and uh, Wilbur Watson and Associates and engineer, city engineer Fred Plummer. The Cleveland Landmarks application has uh, several criteria under which a project can be considered. Eligibility for the National Register, the value of the cultural character to the city of Cleveland, the site of significant historic events, uh, the work of known architects and engineers, uh, embodying the American ingenuity in steel suspension bridges. And it is a visual feature over the Kingsbury Run, which is a natural watershed and the site of early development in Cleveland. This bridge also was part of, as Polly will get into in a little bit, was part of the Supreme Court decisions on segregation in education, and it marks with great potential for healing the division that was created purposefully by its closing, and we hope that the nomination and awareness of what happened with the Sideway Bridge will bring many more stories forward and also put us into the future with good cooperation. This nomination is supported by the Slavic Village and the Kinsman Neighborhood. It is supported by Cleveland Neighborhood Progress, by Mayor Justin Bibb, Councilman Richard Starr, Western Reserve Land Conservancy, Burton Belcar Development, and many others. And you may have noticed that it was published in the Plain Dealer last week. So uh, I'm going to have Polly Bloom from my office continue with this just to run through quickly a few slides to familiarize you with the bridge itself. Thank you. Um, Carl, you can just stay on this uh, slide and I'll tell you when to advance to the next one. Just for um, understanding where the sideway uh, bridge is located, it um, connects Slavic Village and the Kinsman neighborhoods, and it's located south of Opportunity Corridor, which is southwest of Kinsman Road, and it's northeast of East 67 in the Hyacinth neighborhood. When um, for the National Register nomination, the entire 15 acre parcel that you see in red um, was not uh, used for the nomination. The nomination is identifying just the bridge and the land immediately under the bridge, which contains the structural elements and includes the entrances, the concrete piers and the pier bases. That parcel in red is currently owned by RTA. And please advance. Um, this next slide shows that prior to the sideway bridge, there actually was a wood trestle bridge over um, the site. Uh, it was built in 1909 and it connected the two neighborhoods on either side of the Kingsbury Run. And the timber bridge was replaced by the current suspension bridge, which was built in 1930. 
and that bridge was put in to accommodate the train car bars barns below in the Kingsbury Run Valley, which were um, used by the Shaker Heights Rapid Transit Line, which was owned by the Van Swearingen Brothers. And in addition, it maintained a connection between the two neighborhoods and allowed the residents to go to and from educational facilities and also work. And please advance to the next one. Um, this image shows you um, a 1920 proposed concrete bridge. It was interesting that during the research of the sideway bridge, the city of Cleveland archives provided this drawing, which shows a proposed concrete bridge um, that was dated uh, for design in September 8th, 1920. Um, this was a more elaborate roadway bridge that had five arch supports, which stood on four piers. It was designed to be 30 feet wide with nine foot walkways on either side. Um, if you compare it to other bridges in the Cleveland area, it has elements of the Hope Memorial Bridge, which is also called the Lorraine Carnegie Bridge, which opened in 1932. Um, this bridge design was also um, from Wilbur Watson and Associates and noted architect Frank Walker of Walker and Weeks. And then please advance the next. In 1930, um, this design for the pedestrian suspension bridge um, was created by a designer plumber who was a civil engineer. Um, he basically uh, created this design, which offered a very simple and effective solution to span the train car operation below without any intruding peers. Um, as he stated in a um, uh, interview in 1979, he felt that it was a very perfect solution to the site, which had a deep valley and high bluffs. He said the answer. Um, this shows uh, one of the components of the bridge, and you'll see the Roebling uh, mark on it. And in the United States, we have the greatest number of wire cable suspension bridges than any other country. And Sideway is the only Ohio historic American engineering record documented pedestrian only bridge. John A. Roebling and Sons was the world's primary manufacturer of wire cables and were used on the Brooklyn Bridge along with the Sideway Bridge. Please advance. This is a picture of the Sideway Bridge in the 60s and um, as you can see, this is uh, a very good image that shows the beauty and simplicity of the design. And this uh, has significance in terms of its contribution to engineering development related to 20th century American sus suspension bridge construction. Please advance. This image shows you the uh, drawing for Garden Valley. Um, the Kinsman neighborhood evolved. Um, in 1920, it started to experience out migration of both Hungarians and Slovakians who lived in the area, and it became repopulated with Blacks, Italians, Russians, and Jewish families. And between the time of 1960 up to 2014, Census records show that the area population fell from 20,000 to about 7,000. And also the proportion of African American residents rose from 53 to 97%. In the late 1950s, this was the site of one of the first urban renewal projects in Ohio, which was the Garden Valley Estates Public Housing Project. It was 130 acres and it was 650 units. Please advance. In terms of some significance about Sideway Bridge history, we just wanted to highlight on how it contributed um, to the ethnic heritage and social history relating to civil rights, school and housing segregation. The bridge deck was set on fire during the Huff Riots in July 1966. Um, and you'll see on the left is the, um, the bridge closure, kind of a, an area that was 
um, existed on both sides to keep people from trespassing across the bridge. On the right, this actually is an image from the HAER um, uh, materials, which was dated of 1979. So you can still see at that point um, the crane car and uh, storage underneath. Please advance. Um, another significant link to the history of Cleveland is the 1976 decision where Sideway Bridge was named by the federal judge Frank Batista as a contributing factor to school segregation in a landmark 1976 federal NAACP education segregation lawsuit. He basically um, identified that the bridge by being closed and not reopened and not repaired uh, prohibit, prohibited students from Garden Valley to cross the bridge and go to classes on um, the Slavic Village side. Please advance. These next two slides um, show how the Sideway Bridge uh, looks like today. These pictures were taken in early spring. Um, today, if you go out there, it's actually even more overgrown. Um, the bridge has been unused and neglected since 1966. Um, the bridge deck is non-existent. Um, we assume that the uh, someone from the city of Cleveland at some point removed the bridge deck to reduce the risk of people trying to trans, um, to go across the bridge. Um, the area is overgrown with vegetation and also it has become a dumping ground as you'll see in the next bridge. Please advance. Um, Elizabeth and I and um, our clients, uh, Bianca Butts and Andrew Sargent have um, all done tours below the bridge um, and this has um, has a lot of debris uh, there. It has become a dumping ground on some sites. So this is a, a good representation of what you see when you're down in the valley, um, looking up at the bridge and also seeing some of the debris. So we have noticed the last time we were out there that RTA has made a really big effort to clean up a lot of the land underneath the bridge. Yeah, I want, I want that to be noted that that there has been some really good efforts. And please advance, Carl. Um, this is just a, a brief image to identify some of the future uh, goals for this site. Um, the Sideway Bridge and this area has been the focus of many studies over the years. We just identify three here. Um, but there have been additional um, ones that basically identify a vision to restore the bridge as both a connection point above um, and between the two neighborhoods and to identify improvements to bring a public park to the valley below it. Um, it's a wonderful uh, vision uh, due to the fact that it would bring beautiful green space to the urban core of Cleveland. And then in in ending, and I know our clients, Bianca Butts and Andrew Sargent are on the line um, if they want to make any comments, but I just want to reiterate that uh, Perspectus strongly supports this important project. We feel that it's a way to share the history of the site, engage the residents and revitalize the area. There's been substantial support as Elizabeth noted and we're just pleased with um, the leadership that um, we have seen from Burton Bell Carr and Cleveland Neighborhood Progress to take this initiative and run with it and create excitement for just um, a wonderful enhancement to the city of Cleveland. Thank you. Thank you for the presentation. Um, we will run to Mr. Bridges. I can't read the letter actually it's on the screen right now. I'm sorry. That's okay. Uh, we did re receive letters of support from Mayor Bibb. Uh, we have one from the council member, Richard Starr, who is in attendance. And we also have one from Matt Zone 
from um, the Western Reserve Land Conservancy. And as mentioned, we do have representatives from Burton Bell Carr if they would like to speak as well. So um, we'll begin with welcoming the uh, from Burton Bell Carr. If there's any additional word you'd like to say, we'd love to hear them. Uh, we're just grateful for the opportunity for our partners uh, to be able to present some historical context for this work and um, for the continued uh, legacy that this project can hopefully hold for the city. We're grateful for the support of our council representative and councilman Starr and our partners at Cleveland Neighborhood Progress that have gotten us to this point. And we look forward to um, receiving uh, just being having the opportunity for the commission to hear us is, is exciting for us and to bring more um, ears and perspective to this work is very important to the east side of Cleveland and specifically the residents of Central and Kinsman. So thank you so much for the consideration today. Thank you. Um, we'll move to Councilman Starr. I just saw him up on the screen and now I do not. Did I? Did they have to exit? It appears that he may have left, but we do have his uh, letter here of support. So, all right, excellent. Um, Director Wong. Hi. Uh, on behalf of City Planning, we are very supportive of this effort. Um, you know, wanted to just reflect what the project team has already shared with regards to healing and um, really respecting the history here, um, as well as a, a really um, a really interesting perspective um, over the the natural resource that is here in Kingsbury Run. So um, we are all on board and very supportive. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you, Director Long. We'll open up the floor then to the commission for questions or comments. Mr. Brancatelli. Yes. Uh, thank you, Chairwoman. Um, just a couple of quick comments and uh, a little perspective. Um, I was the executive director of solid fields development back when one of the early studies was done in 2008. Um, and uh, Bobby Rich Tell, who was our development officer working in the St. Hyacinth neighborhood, um, had done a significant amount of research, both in the condition of the overpass as well as the history. And um, uh, we were very instrumental in assembling land along the, uh, the St. Hyacinth, what was then known, uh, early known as the Yaskova neighborhood. Um, where we assembled some old industrial buildings and some land and, and demolished them and cleared it to help create kind of uh, that access point. Uh, for those who remember, uh, there was a dandy uh, potato chip and pretzel factory at the end, the factory is still there, um, kind of underutilized now since they've been moved out. Um, it's kind of a, an abandoned area, but the land had been cleared. Um, and uh, so, um, and quite, uh, and know the history of this area quite well. Um, I'm a second generation Polish immigrant. Um, my family is from Zabłocka, Poland, and um, know that area um, and know the issues that they faced with Todd School over there, which is now cleared out and is now a public park and part of the redevelopment of what we were hoping for a transit oriented design neighborhood. Um, uh, and uh, which is ironic since Todd School and TOD are, are both one of the same acronym. Um, uh, but uh, looking at the history of that neighborhood and, and some of the grim history also of the torso murders um, that were under the Kinsbury run, um, it's uh, uh, great to see that this is being resurrected. Um, as an access point, uh, things have certainly changed with the Bessemer connection and now with um, looking at Opportunity Corridor, which now connects the neighborhoods um, with trails and, and uh, right-of-ways. Um, whether the bridge gets restored or we look at this as a historic overlook and perspective, um, this is a great opportunity to bring focus back to was a very sad chapter in our, in our history. Um, and then looking at um, potentially restoring a, an amazing uh, bridge like this. Um, uh, excited that this is moving forward and want to thank Councilman Starr and everyone who's been participating in this activity. So. Just a little perspective from uh, my past and, and what we are looking forward to in the future. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Frankatelli. That's very helpful. It's wonderful um, structure and such a great history or amazing history um, related to it. Other questions or comments from the commission? Well, 
Well, as I mentioned, I'm in full support of uh, the nomination. Um, would someone like to put vote uh, in addition to what I've heard from my uh, fellow council, uh, commission members? Would someone like to put forward a motion? I would welcome the motion to move this forward. Thank you, Mr. Fregatelli. Do we have a second, Mr. Edmund? I'll, I'll second the motion. Thank you. You have a second. Any further discussion? All right. Mr. Um, Brentis, please call roll and announce the results. Thank you, Madam Chair. Anderson? Yes. Frank Catelli? Oops. Yes. Edmund? Yes. Wong? Yes. Jurassic? Yes. And Trot? Yeah. The motion to nominate the Sideway Bridge as a Cleveland landmark passes unanimously. Thank you. Thank you. We look forward to seeing this continue on the process. Appreciate your support.